if you want to know how to play with that much independence, to stick around and I'll show you how. Welcome, welcome. This is the eighth part of a series of videos that I've made on how to use Ted Reed's progressive steps to syncopation for the modern drummer. Now essentially, I'm going to take one concept and take a look at three different ways to play this concept. What I'm trying to do is get us so that you're able to solo over an ostinato. The previous videos have had several ostinatos, and this is yet another variation on how to do that. Now, essentially, it's um, based on being able to take page 37, which is the first exercise where uh, Ted starts to write out melodic exercises, and put the ostinato underneath it and embellish those exercises with paradiddles. The first video shows you exactly how I do that. I'll do it very quickly here. But essentially, when you see an eighth note, you play a single stroke. When you see a quarter note, you play a paradiddle. This is regardless of which hand it lands on. And when you see a rest, an eighth rest, you play two uh, doubles. So a quarter rest, for instance, will have a, a two doubles back to back. I know it sounds kind of strange when I explain it in words, but like I said again, go back to the first video. I am going to put this in a playlist so you'll be able to see them all at once. Okay, so let's get started. All right, here we are back at the drum set. But before I get into it, first, please make sure to hit the red button below and subscribe. And when you do, make sure to ring the bell. That way you can get notified every time I upload a new video. All right, to the drums. To recap, I'll show you how I embellish these rhythms with a paradiddle. Essentially, you're really playing a series of double paradiddles and paradiddles, but the thought process is a little different. So every time you see an eighth note, you play a single, and every time you see a quarter note, you play a paradiddle, and you're accenting the first note of each. So if you look at the first bar, uh, that is page 37 in my edition, <laughs> exercise one, then it would sound like this. Here's the raw rhythm. One, two, three. Okay. So if you want to accent, keep those same accents, but use paradiddles, it would sound like this. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing as we read through the lines on this page. Now, I've also said in the past exercises or the past videos that if you can master the first three lines of this page, you pretty much are good to go for the rest of the page. So for the purposes of expediency, I'll only do three lines at a time. Here's the first way that we can try working on this page with this ostinato. Here's the ostinato, first of all. One, two, three. Okay. Now I'm going to add the jam block as well. And <clears throat> here we go. I'm going to play just bar number one to start with. That's just the first bar. Now, I'll go ahead and play all three lines, the first three lines of the page. So what's happening there is, if you go through the first 
uh, seven of these, by now you should have enough independence together to be able to play this. So if this is really way too tough, go back to the first one and start there. The ostinatos are much simpler. Um, essentially, by this time, you're able to coordinate which hand is going to land with which foot, essentially. You're thinking this way, not this way, you know, vertically, not horizontally at first, until you're able to sort of step back and somewhat forget about the feet. All you know is that they're lining up with your hands. And then you get that vertical illusion where things are all happening separately. OK, here's the second way to start to really uh, drive yourself and strengthen this concept towards being able to solo. And that is to play it on two sound sources. So I'll play it on a cymbal and the snare drum. That's the hands I'm talking about. So here we go. Okay, so your ear is expanding. You're able to hear two different sounds of the instrument while that's happening. Then lastly, which is much closer to being able to solo, is to play the three lines, but try to play them in any part of the instrument. Essentially, you're playing soloistically, but you're not improvising. You're actually playing this concept. That's going to stretch your ear even more. So there you have it, three really uh, not simple but quick ways that you can get yourself a little closer to being able to solo over an ostinato, at least this ostinato. Now notice that I started on just the snare drum, then I added, went on to two sound sources, and then I kind of improvised as far as the sound sources I'm going to use, but I used the written material. Okay. So if you like this video, please go ahead and share it. Sharing is caring. <laughs> and I would also ask you to go to my online lesson site, aubreydrumlessons.com. And there you'll find all kinds of lessons goodies. And also in the video section, you'll find a link to some of my playlists. And don't forget, this video will be part of a playlist. So you can go back all the way to the beginning of this series. Also, lastly, <laughs> please go to uh, 13gomusic.com. It's a new project I'm involved with. I'm really proud of it, and I think you'll enjoy the music. All right, thanks, and I'll see you next week.